Right, so to uh, spare my blushes, I uh, didn't show you the soldering, um, but uh, I've got my first cable connected. Yeah, not the world's greatest soldering, but not too bad. I'm hoping to get better as I go along. The other end of the cable is uh, just some boot laces and then I've got an earth cable to ground the shield. I've taken the fans out because uh, they were getting in the way while I was soldering. Um, basically I've got to offer the, uh, the bottom panel up to the case and of course the fans have got cables on them and they were just getting in the way as I was putting the uh, the panel in and out of the case. Uh, I might actually take the connectors out of the panel. Um, I know it seems a bit daft, I've only just put them in, but uh, it might make them a little bit easier to hold on to while I'm soldering. I'll, uh, I'll probably, if I do, I'll hold the uh, connectors in the vise there. Okay, a little sneak preview of the inside of the case. Um, I promise I will shoot a proper video uh, about the rest of the wiring. Um, I wired it up before I started making videos, so uh, I'll, it will have to be a guided tour rather than an actual video of me doing it. Um, but here you can see the back of the connector, and then the cable runs down along there, and then just bends up here into the driver. And there you can see here the earth runs round to here. So this this cable it's fairly flexible. Um, I could have done with uh, maybe another 20 mil or so on this um, <clears throat> uh, just to just to give me a little bit more flexibility in it. Uh, I think it'll be okay though. I'll give it a, a week or two in the case uh, bent into shape and I think it'll hold the shape perfectly. Um, the problem was this end. Uh, I, yeah, I did have enough cable, but um, I had a couple of attempts to solder that in. Now, as you can see, this cable, I need to, ideally, I need to get uh, nine pieces of CY cable in here, and I really don't know whether it's going to fit. So um, I'll certainly be able to get these four pieces in, um, and then there'll be another four coming out here and running around uh, for the low voltage signals. Um, so it might end up that the four coming out here will be clipped across here. I don't know yet. I'll have to I'll have to wait and see. So I'm gonna try <coughs> I'm gonna try and uh, show you how to prepare and connect one of the um, sockets now. Uh, this Probably won't go very well because I don't have a very good filming setup at the moment, but uh, well, here goes. So, you want to remove about 30 millimeters of the outer sheath. Um, you don't have to be terribly accurate, but about that much. Because although you need to worry about interference, um, at the end of the day, you've got, to, you've got to actually wire this thing up, and if you're like me and nowhere near being a pro, um, giving yourself an extra couple of mil of cable to play with really helps. So it's better to have a, a couple of mil unshielded than to screw up the connection because you haven't got enough wire. So once you've scored it, if you bend it, the cable will break, or the outer sheath will break. You can throw that bit away, take back the shielding, and don't forget you can always cut these a bit shorter if, if you think you've, you've been far too generous. Now if you twist these together now, when you come to cut them off, 
we've got a neat little bundle and you won't have tiny little wires just all over the workplace. Except of course that one which I missed. Take off the inner protection. This stuff was specially designed to gather static. Because once you've got it on you, you won't ever get it off. It sticks like, it sticks like it's glued. Now inside you'll find that core, that piece of cotton, get rid of that. And you've got an inner rubber core, which you don't need. Just nip that out. And there you go, you've got your five cores. Grab your wire strippers and strip off a bit. That's really quite generous. That's about 10 mil. Um, you don't need that much. Um, five would do it. As I've done the first one that much. Now, what is important is all your cables are the same length. It doesn't matter if you've removed a little bit too much sheath on that one, then the, there's ample space in the connector. Um, but it is important that they're all the same length because when they go into the connector they they splay out in a circle so you need them the same length so they're all the same distance from the center if you've got one that's too long um, the others are going to have to be pulled in close and you'll end up with a kink in the longer one which yeah not the end of the world but if you can avoid it so much the better and the, the way to just get them all the same length is just make sure when you cut the cable you just cut it square across. So just lightly twist the ends. There you go. Five cables prepared. Next step is to tin them. Right, so once your soldering iron's up to temperature, <clears throat> take your solder. and just tin up your wires. There we go, you're looking for a little bit more solder on there than, yeah, just enough to cover the wires and give you a little bit extra. The next step is take the case side off, uh, the connection panel off, and then fill the cups with a uh, dribbler solder so we can then mount the wires. Right, I really don't know how well this bit of filming is going to go, so uh, I'll just talk you through it first. And then hopefully I'll be able to show you exactly the process taking place. What I've done is taken the connection panel off, and I've clamped it to the side of the case there. And on this side, I've got my drill vise um, <clears throat> behind it. And the idea there is that just stops it from moving about. Um, you don't need anything. Um, particularly strong, I mean, you're only soldering, you're not uh, pushing on it or anything. Now, there are the pins, and what you're looking to do is about half fill that cup with solder. So you bring your solder iron in from below, 
touch it to there uh, with a, a slight wetting of solder on it just to in increase the heat transfer and then you just push solder in there until it's about half full you can let it go cold at that point if you want but the next step is then to bring the cable in and just lay the cable on top with the keep the soldering iron pressed here lay the cable on top and when the solder in the cup melts just press the cable down into the solder and then wait until the solder on the cable um, melts and the two the solder in the cup solder in the cable will mix together and then re remove the heat whilst holding the cable still and you should get a good connection between the cable and the cup at least that's the plan now I bought pins one millimeter pins um, or pins that would handle one millimeter cable but I swear that these are 0.75 because the one millimeter cable I've I've got here just doesn't fit well into these cups um, it's supposed to it's supposed to go to the bottom of the cup I don't know if you can see in there there's a slight recess but there's no way the cable's going to go in there it's, uh, it's far too tight um, well let me get the cable and show you As you can see, the cable just stops at, at the start of the cup. So, a bit disappointed by that. Um, and I, I know these are 1mm cables, um, well it says on the side, but uh, they also fit 1mm ferrules perfectly. Uh, so I'm not quite sure what's going on there. Right, I think that's about the best I'm going to be able to do in terms of filming locations. It's... Um, a bit precarious. Precarious. <laughs> Lost the power of speech there for a moment. Okay. So I think that's about the best I can do. I've placed the camera up on a very badly made stand. And I've zoomed it in as much as I can. So hopefully you'll be able to see me um, screwing up some soldering. Right, so that's the pins filled. You need to about half fill them. And I need my wiring guide. So just double check, pin 5 is at the bottom. And that's four, three, two, one. So uh, I'll do Earth first. It's a handy one to do first because it it's not necessary for this build. And it locks everything in place. Okay, first one in. Now it's worth uh, bending blue and brown up out of the way now. Um, because you want them on the top later on when you're doing pins one and two.
Now some of these can get a bit fiddly. So if you've got some got some pinches, you can just you can hold the cable with them. There you go, that's a nice joint. I'm going to give that a quick cook from below just to make sure. So the, the weight of the cable was um, pulling it down, making it difficult to get the, the top cables up to the pins. Yeah, I. I know there's too much solder on these, but I want to make sure. It's, uh, I, they, they wouldn't pass inspection, but uh, they aren't going to come loose. So I just whacked a bit of heat shrink around that brown cable there. Um, because I was a tiny bit concerned that I'd remove too much too much of the sheath. Now what I like to do is just a little tug test on each one just to make sure it's mechanically in place. I'm pretty sure all of these are. So there you go. Not the prettiest soldering job ever, but it works. And then the last step a little bit of heat shrink on there. You black it with a hot air gun for a minute. There we go. Job done on that end. so that's the four stepper cables done <clears throat> I've got to put heat shrink on them yet um, but as you can see we've got somewhat better with practice right so now I'll just quickly heat shrink them and then I'm going to put the panel back on the bottom of the case just with a couple of screws um, and treat these cables to the exact length they need to be and then I'll show you uh, putting the connectors on the end of one of these cables and wiring on the earth cable.